This is ContactTalkRadio.com. Consciousness in action. And you are taking action into your consciousness by tuning into Contact Talk Radio. And on TuneIn.com, Hing.fm, and Upsnap Mobile. Contact Talk Radio. You're listening to Dear Venus with your host, Venus Andrick. Hey, hi everybody. It's February 5th, 2013. This year is just trotting along, isn't it? Today's topic, OBs, O-B-E, out-of-body experiences. We're going to have some real stories from real people or about real people. But first of all, I'm going to give you a phone number because on my show every Tuesday, you can call in. And talk to me, and I'll do a reading for you. You know how I am. Claire sentient for sure. Claire audience, clairvoyant, uh, medium, the whole thing. And uh, I'd love to look into your life, your problems, your people that are alive, and see what we can do to help you. I work with a lot of energies, too, to change stuff. Here's the phone number. All countries, one 230 3062 Again, it's 877 877- Two three zero three zero six two, and um, as you know, I do phone readings uh, too. I do a lot of phone readings for people where I can go more in depth, spend more time with you. Um, you know, when I'm on the radio, it's like sort of an entertainment thing. I do the best I can, but we can't be too boring. And I try not to be boring when we're having phone readings either. By the way, but uh, let's see. Oh, I just wanted to read you some feedback from my latest newsletter. Um, that newsletter was titled The Man with the Dehydrated Heart. Those of you who are on my mailing list to get one or two of these a month, there's stories, true stories about people I work with, with their permission, of course, and uh, what we do and what happens. Kind of fascinating, I think. Uh, if you want to be on my newsletter list, I think you know how to do it. Go to my home page, GodIsAlwaysHappy.com. Look for the blue headphones and sign up there. You'll also get a free MP3 mojo. Um, when you do that. Okay, so the man with the dehydrated heart. To su- uh, sum it up, this woman had known a man for many, many years, but they'd never gotten together. And she finally broke up with somebody else, and then this man was free. And they started seeing each other, but there were problems, a lot of big problems. And so we were working together on the phone, and uh, I went inside and read his mind and his... Uh, True love showed up from the other side who died when she was very young and he was very young. He'd been carrying the old candle for her all this time. And it went on from there. And um, So I won't go through it all now, but here's what she said. After we had the chat with him, uh, after I went into his head and talked to him and the true love, etc., she said they went out again and he made mention of his dead true love in passing. She... Uh, Yes, and I talked to her like I told you. He said it, with, but with a smile during dinner, and he'd never been able to do that before. Later on, he said something about he didn't think he'd still be alone at this point in his life. And I remember um, his true love and I were talking about that, and I was talking to him about that. And so this uh, lady says, I guess the wheels are turning after what you said to him. And then later he said, at times it felt like we're one being. He definitely heard you when you spoke to him. I love it whenever, when whomever you're, you've been speaking with comes out with a ver- the very things you've said or reflects them. Yes, I've worked with her a, a number of times, so she's used to that happening. So why don't we look into Obi's out-of-body experiences. I remember Summer, my daughter, she has a show right before mine, the Flow Dreaming Show, she got very interested in out-of-body experiences when she was in her young teens, I think. And she read all she could about them. She talked about them. She tried to get out. Uh, we were very familiar with Robert Monroe and his books in the Monroe Institute. He was a man who was very into getting out of your body. And the Monroe Institute still exists. Is it in Virginia? I can't remember. But he's died. He's passed on to the big sky, somewhere into the big sky. But Summer always wanted to go there, but somehow we never made it. But she'd read all the books and she'd practice. And uh, I asked her today what happened because I couldn't remember the details. And she said um, she didn't do that well with it. She said, but she was 
able at one point to look around the room with her eyes shut and see everything. And you know, that's odd because I've often thought that I could just close my eyes and be able to see everything through my eyes, through my eyelids. I'm doing it now and I can't, but I always think I can. But she was able to do that when she was trying to get out of her body. And she said at that time she also felt uh, my other arm swishing around, and then I got scared. It felt like my body was half in and half out. And in my head I heard very loud buzzing noises, which is what I've read about. You get these loud buzzing noises. And, yeah, you can feel funny half in, half out. There's all different kinds of things that people say, I haven't really left my body, but I sure leave my, well, I haven't left my body with my other body, but I leave my body with my mind all the time. I'm almost always out of my mind. I mean, out of my body with my mind. Wait a minute, where am I here? Um, yeah, because, you know, with this work, I have to travel. I go everywhere to the other side. I go to all parts of the world. I go into all kinds of people I've never met, never, never will. And I was thinking about that. It's not Maybe some part of me is out, the body's out, but I don't think it's the same thing as when you move out of your body and you look back and you see it laying there on the bed or sitting there in the chair with your mouth open drooling. It's not the same. Um, I was thinking again about that this morning. It's not quite the same, but of course I'm a telepath and it runs real strong in my family. It's one of the things I just always do. I mean, I don't even think about it. I try not to do it. I try not to think about it because it's very bothersome. A lot of times you do not want to know what people are thinking about you. It's not always nice. But the other day, uh, I think it was Friday, I was out at the um, um, hardware store and I was getting some plants out front. I was going to plant those primroses you might have seen on my Facebook page. And uh, this man came running over to me. And I know him. I went to school with him. He was a little bit older than me. And he's back in town and... He was talking to me and talking to me about other things and this and that. And anyway, I went on and I went home. You know, he wouldn't get out of my head. It's like uh, he talked to me. I kept picking up on him that day, the next day, really strong. And finally, it's weaseled off a bit, you know. You know, he was thinking stuff about me. Oh, you know, he'd like to go out with me. Oh, he had all these complimentary things, which I really like, but I I don't want to go out with him, you know. So it just kept bothering me, and I kept, I mean, I knew it. If he knew that I was hearing everything he was thinking. He'd be so embarrassed. But And then my sister called this morning, Polly, and said this lady named Diana, who lives up her road, wanted to know if I wanted to go to her house tomorrow with them for lunch. And I said, I can't. I'm going down the mountain. I'd really love to go. But I already got her I already got her invitation yesterday. Polly didn't even ask how. Well, I was just walking around doing my own thing, and all of a sudden, bloop, right in my head, I see and hear her, and she's... Um, thinking about having this big dinner luncheon and inviting me. I mean, I already got the invitation. This happens a lot, and I'm pretty much used to it. But anyway, I don't know if that means I'm out of my body. I'm out of something. But anyway, back to the Obi kind of thing. I remember a book I read many years ago. I think it was written by a man named Richie. That's all I can remember, but he was in the military, a young guy, and he was in the hospital for some reason, and he died. And they covered him up with a blanket over his head, and they were just waiting for the people in the morgue to come and get him. And he went through this whole thing. He left his body, walked all through the hospital. He tried to talk to people. He went in various rooms. He saw himself under the blanket. He followed his body down to the morgue. He was getting really nervous. He thought, you know, they were going to formaldehyde him and bury him. And here he, he says, I wasn't dead. I was alive. Well, it turns out he was out of his body, but that set him off on a whole quest about out-of-body experiences. Um, and there's a silver cord. A lot of people are afraid to leave the body. Like, I imagine it would be nerve-wracking, like Summer's experience. Um, but but we're attached. Uh, the silver cord is apparently in our solar plexus. And when you leave your body, this other body leaves the physical body. People who can see these kinds of things see the cord. It's like a white translucent energy cord, and it goes with the person. And a lot of people who leave their bodies look back and see this, and they'll often feel a tug on it when it's time to go back, and they'll slam back into their body. Probably what happens at night, you know, when all of a sudden, bam, you wake up or you jump in bed, you've probably just fallen back into your body. The old cord, like the cat's jumped on you or something, and you've been slammed back into your body. 
So I was reading this book, and I, I think I brought it, I talked about this a couple of weeks ago, uh, The Last Frontier, Life After Death, Julia Asante, and she was talking about an out-of-body experience she had. She was There was a story about a lady she was working with who died, and she went with her, or the woman entered her mind, and she got to see everything through her eyes. And then what happened was, just then I left my body, specifically out of the right side of my head. I found myself entering a squirrel's nest high up in the elm beside me. Once inside it, I saw it from the squirrel's point of view, overcome by the nest coziness and warmth, the spicy, woody smell of its leafy lining, the sweet animal scent emanating from the furry furry baby squirrels that slept snuggled in the leaves. What Carol and her friend who just died uh, wanted was to savor the very essence of earthly existence before she left it. Perhaps experiencing it through my physical body gave it a directness and intensity that may not have been possible otherwise. When I returned to my body, Carolyn shot out of my head and into the sky. The whole episode took only ten minutes, yet it remains to this day one of the most exuberant in my memory. This was a woman who did not die, just die consciously. She rode on the natural acceleration of her death with rapture. She was saying people have all different kinds of ways of dying and that you should never promise they'll see the Virgin Mary or God or Jesus or whoever it might be because you don't know. And remember what the beings tell me when we asked what really happens to dead people. And they said they have all kinds of different experiences just as live people do. Interesting. My mother, of course, who died a little over two and a half years ago now, was not afraid to die because in her 30s, she had quite a few kids, and I think she just had Candy, the youngest one, a baby. And she had her third major operation for a problem they hadn't been able to fix. Um, they found that gangrene, and she was dying, and she was in her hospital bed, and she felt people knocking against it. She was thinking, why do they have to clean the room now? She was in terrible pain. And then all of a sudden, boop, she said she just popped out of her body. She found herself up on the ceiling looking down, and all the pain was gone, and she felt wonderful. She felt fabulous. She felt totally well, healthy and happy, and then she thought about all of us little kids and her little new little baby. Plop, she was right back in her body into all the pain. Um, she did live uh, because that time they'd found the problem and fixed it, but after that, she was never afraid to die, and when she was so sick and dying, we talked about it quite a lot. And I'd always say, are you afraid, Mom? No, no. Right to the last moments, are you afraid, Mom? No, no, never was. She just didn't want to go because she didn't want to leave us, her kids. She wanted to be with us to the last second, squeeze the last bit out of it. Um, but she left without fear, and isn't that a blessing? Because so many people are afraid to die, and I think if you... Practice having obese, getting out of your body. Uh, I think once you do it, you would go, oh, that's easy. Nothing to it. Of course I'm still alive. I'm still here. I often say that I know the dead are more alive than we are because I feel they are. And I'm not afraid of being dead. I don't like the idea of being sick and dragging around and all that stuff. I hate that idea. But the idea of slipping over and being dead, I'm all excited about it. It's very thrilling. <laughs> I know that sounds nuts to a lot of people, but I just totally know that we go on. Everything and everybody does. As a being said, God never forgets itself. So no matter what you are, who you are, a bug, a piece of dirt, uh, a cat, you or me, we're all God having experiences, and God never forgets itself or its experience. So we're always who we are. And I believe that. So what's the problem? You know, I think the hardest part is living here, frankly, don't you? I mean, I don't find it easy. (laughs) It has its high points. It has its good points. But aren't there always challenges? There's always new things coming along. Right before uh, I had to get on air here, an old boyfriend of mine called me. The love of my life that I'd been in love with for so many years until he moved in with me. And then I found out that I was mistaken. But anyway, he's a nice guy. He's uh, He called me and... (laughs) 
he'd he'd had a, another near death a death experience he'd had been frozen for a while and he lost some of his memory he'd forgotten he already called and told me all this but um you know he has to think about this a lot but he's into all the things we're into and i don't believe he's afraid of death either he was always able to do a lot of things with his mind um but you know it comes to all of us and i would like to ask i said i did say did you have any experiences on the other side and he remembered uh, something, but not a lot, because, you know, a lot of his memory is going, I'm surprised he remembers me. But that's the part I don't like. I don't like all the stuff that adds, you know, that builds up to it. I just want to go out easy. Let me go to sleep and slip out. Don't we all want to do that? All right. Well, it looks like uh, it's time for a short break. So we're going to take a short break. I'm going to come back and take your call, see what you're up to. Venus Andrecht with the Dear Venus Show. love and benefit from the good energy mojos that venus has on her website do you sometimes feel it when she tosses mojos to you on her radio show if so you will extra like her paintings and wall switches because as venus paints she fills her work with powerful good energy mojos venus says when you have these on your walls your home or workplace is always filled with good mojo to help things in your life go better for you When you purchase this very popular art from Venus, she also puts a personal mojo in the piece just for you. You can see and purchase all this great energy art on ArtMojos.com. That's ArtMojos.com. Intentionally bring more power of the universe into your life. Many people say that Venus's paintings are always working for them. Let them work for you, too. People tell me they listen to my archive radio shows at night because I put them to sleep. When I complain, they say, oh, it's the sound of your voice, Venus. I love it because it relaxes me. Well, okay, that's good then. You can find all my archive shows on iTunes, Pinterest, and YouTube. To find my live and other archive shows, please go to my website, GodIsAlwaysHappy.com, and look under radio on my site. That's GodIsAlwaysHappy.com. And sleep tight. Don't let those bed bugs bite. Want to win a phone reading with Venus? Venus announces a new winner's name every Tuesday on her Dear Venus show. It's easy to get in the possible winner's pot. Go to her website and look for the blue headphones. Click on them and you'll get a free MP3 mojo from Venus called No Matter What Happens, Everything Is Always Okay. People say Venus's mojos bring many good results into their lives. Clicking on the blue headphones puts you on Venus's latest mailing list where she draws the names for free readings. If you have never clicked on the blue headphones, you're not on the current list. Venus's website is godisalwayshappy.com. That's godisalwayshappy.com. And while you're there, look for more MP3 mojos that you can purchase for a nominal price. You'll be surprised at the happy results they may bring into your life. Are you ready to stop suffering over men? Are you seriously ready to be happy? Are you ready to have a great love life? Venus finally found the answers for an emotionally happy love life. She wrote the five-star book about how you, too, can change your life with certain men, or even certain women. In it, you'll read the horrifying and funny true stories of Venus's former love life, and the true tales of many of her friends and clients, and how they all finally escaped the crying, whining, moaning, emotional trap to find real love and happiness. The ebook is titled, Certain Men, How to Unlove Them, Unneed Them, and Replace Them with a Good Guy. It works with certain women, too. People say this book has saved their lives. You can read the first chapter on Venus's website, GodIsAlwaysHappy.com. You can find Certain Men as an inexpensive ebook at all the online bookstores. Certain Men, are you ready to give them the boot? Are you ready for good love? Certain Men, the ebook by Venus Andrecht, now available at all online bookstores. You're listening. 
listening to Dear Venus with your host, Venus Andrick. Hi, welcome back. Hey, got a new blog coming out. and Talk about being telepathic. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Did I have a time? This blog, I call it The Vixen at the Senior Center. Yes. It's coming out February 6, 2013. That's tomorrow. I'll put it up. If you're subscribed, it'll come naturally into your inbox. You won't have to go hunting for it. But if you have to hunt for it, uh, godisalwayshappy.com forward slash blog. You can sign up, you know, to get it every week. Just look for the um, orange RSS feed. I think that's what it says. Anyways, how Sanja, Sanja took care of my mom while she was sick. Sanja's a caregiver, a wonderful person. And I had this brilliant idea because she's out of work at the moment and she's freaking out. And I said, well, let's go to the senior center. A lot of people there. I bet we can find you some business. Oh, my gosh. She practically had to carry me out to the car after our experience there. I hope you'll read it. The Vixen at the Senior Center. I had to go home and take a nap. I mean, I am so sensitive to people's thoughts that sometimes they can just beat the kawali out of me. <laughs> so... Check out that blog. Anyway, uh, I like to write them because I like to write, but I also like to cheer you up and make your day better. <laughs> and if I can use myself in my true life, I do that. Also, I'm on Google Plus now. Uh, you can find me under Venus Andrecht, all small, lowercase. I'm on Facebook, too, of course, but you know me on Facebook. We've had our issues. And we have a live chat room, and I always enjoy uh, talking to people on the live chat and helping you when I can. Uh, so... Try being on the, the live chat. Uh, a lot of nice people here, and they build up good relationships. All right. Let's move. Let's go talk to real people here and see what's on your minds. Elena, is that you in Chicago? It is. Hi, Venus. How are you? Good. Now, Elena was on last week, and I think you were on the whole time, and just as I called on you, the call dropped, right? Yeah. And so I'm glad you get, got back on again. That's terrific. So do you still have the same problem, whatever that might be? Yeah, I'm I'm going through a recent breakup, very, very new. Um, okay. And I guess I was just wondering if you can tell me if you, if you think that this is going to work out because I don't feel as though it's over or if, um, you know, what you can see from his side of things. Because okay, well, why don't you tell us? In brief, the story, because all of everybody on Radio Land, including me, wants to know what what it is, who he is, who you are, what's happened, anything juicy. Just tell us, okay? Yeah, nothing really, nothing too crazy. We were together for four years, and um, I think he's kind of at a turning point in his life right now, as far as where do I go and what do I do career wise. Mm-hmm. He's he's very educated, but unfortunately, hasn't had the best of luck coming across that ideal career. So he um, broke up with you? Did he break up with he, you? He did, yes. Okay, what did he say when he broke up with you? Um, that that I'm his rock and that he doesn't know where he would be without me today. And, you know. But uh, goodbye? <laughs> what did he of, say? Yeah, I mean, what plenty he, of positive I'm, things. But just that, you know, that... I think he's concerned that he may have to move out of state or, you know, to achieve this. What did he um, say? What did he say to you? Okay, How did he, he break wanted, up? He, he said all those very nice things. He was crying, <laughs> yeah. which makes it even worse. Um, so both of us are sitting there crying together. And, um, and what did and, he say, Elena? What did he say to break up with he, you? What did he say? He he just told me he he doesn't he doesn't know what's what's going on he doesn't know where he's going to be and what he's going to be doing. Okay, so I think he's having okay. a hard time moving forward. Okay, the reason I was so insistent there is because I need to know what to ask him when I go into his head. I need to check him out and see if he's telling you the truth. Okay. I just need to know if he loves me. Okay. <laughs> we can so move you guys, past everything else. Were you living together? Um, no, we were not. Okay, so Elena, I need to know how old you are and what kind of work you do, and the same for him. I am 28, and I am in sales. He is 26, Mm -hmm. and he's actually a firefighter. Okay, what's his first name? What do you call him? His name is Brad. Brad? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, I'm going out of my body or out of my mind or taking my mind, and I'm going to go into your head, okay, Elena? Get ready. Here I come. Boom. 
<laughs> Sometimes people feel me. If you do, don't be alarmed. All right. Let me just be you for a, fo- a few moments here. Elena, 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 Elena. I'm just making a good connection with you so I can do the job here. Yes. Oh, my gosh. It's like your heart has gotten narrow. Uh, skinny and it's flopping. It's like flopping in the wind, like, whew, like a stiff breeze has a hold of it. Flopping, yeah. flopping. Does it ever palpitate? Do you have palpitations? Yes, especially okay. the last. Well, week that's or what so. I'm feeling. Okay, yeah. honey, it's all right. It's all right. Uh, it's not dangerous. It's just an emotional flapping, and I could feel it, so I felt the heart was doing it too. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Okay, let me just stay with you a moment. I feel like I need to stay with you another moment here to get you stabilized a bit because there's a lot of pain here. And now as I'm talking, more and more pain is coming up through your body. It's sort of like you're letting it go. You've been trying to be a trooper, but, you know, you've been holding it in. But it's all right to let it out. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. You can let it out. Better out than in, I always say about these things. All right, let me go find Brad, and Brad the fireman. All right, Brad, 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 Brad the fireman. Does he have a job right now? He does. It's as just not what he wants to do. No, okay. he's actually, well, part-time, yes, as a fireman. Oh, okay, he's- okay. Let me go talk to him now. You just sit there and let your juices roll out. <laughs> All those old salty tears, sweetie. Okay, all right, Brad, Brad. I'm a friend of Elena's. Can I t- come talk to you, please? I want to talk to you. She needs you. She needs me to find out how you're feeling, how you're doing, how you feel about her. Okay, would you mind? <sighs> That's his big sigh. Okay, 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 okay. I know this has been hard. So tell me, was what you told her true? Why are you breaking up with her? What's the real reason? Is there a real reason beyond what you said? I'm just going to sit with you a minute. I have to keep talking because I'm on the radio. So I can't just get quiet like I normally do and just listen. I have to just sort of do it in layers here. Okay, let me just feel, feel, feel him. He feels very sad. He feels very sorry. He feels weak. feels like all the stuffing and the strength has gone out of him. Uh, so why did you do this? He says, I'm no good. I'm, he's feeling He's feeling like a failure in some ways, or he hasn't made it, or he hasn't gotten to where he wants to be, or he can't. Does this make sense to you, Elena? Yes. Okay, back to him then. Just double checking. All right, Mm -hmm. back to you. Back to you, my friend Brad. What else? So why would you break up with Elena? Because you're feeling like this. He says, because I don't feel like a man. I don't feel like I can be the man that I could support or look after. I don't feel like I could be the man. I haven't found myself. I don't know what I want to do. And he's crying again. You said he was crying before, but he's crying with me now, too. He says, I feel lost. Um, okay, when you think about her and what she's doing, how, how do you measure up? How do you measure up? It's like he thinks you're stronger than he is in some ways, that he doesn't measure up somehow. I think a lot of this comes from his own past and not you. It has nothing to do with you. He's trying to find himself. He doesn't know how. He's thinking maybe he should just go on a road trip or he should travel or backpack or just get out and maybe do itinerant jobs around the country or overseas. Has he mentioned anything like that to you? Yes. Yes? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, we're on track then. Everything so far is he's saying what's true then. Okay. That's good. Good sign. Okay. And uh, why do you feel you need to do that, Brad? He says, I just feel like I need to. He says, I feel weak. I feel transparent. I feel like I don't know who I am. Like I'm not filled up somehow. Like he just feels like, (sighs) oh, that's his sigh. He feels like he's got to go out and find himself. Like he's got to just even start walking and just leave everything behind and take just a very few things and walk, 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 walk. So how do you, are you, do you still love, um, Elena, she wants to know that. That's her main question. Do you love her? He says, yes, he loves you. He doesn't know if he loves himself. He doesn't know who he is, what he is, if he can love himself. He needs, it's true, he does need to find out who he is. And for some reason, he thinks he has to go off and wander to find it. He thinks he can't find it by staying here or by staying with you or to stay. It's very confusing in his head here. Is there anything else you want me to ask him while I'm there? No, I mean, I think you pretty much 
you pretty much covered everything. I guess I just don't know why, if if you're contemplating moving somewhere for a job, why I wouldn't be included in that picture, why we can't get through all of this together. Well, let me ask him that. Let me ask him point blank. Why, if you're planning to move somewhere and do a job or do whatever, why can't you take Elena with you? Why can't you do this together? He says, because I'm not a whole person. He feels if you guys were together, he just is a shadow of himself. He has to be able to stand on his own two feet in his own mind and be able to get along on his own and be independent. Has he had a problem with this before, Elena? Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Well, there you go then. He's got to do what he's got to do. All you can do here is just say how much you love him and you support him and anything he needs to do and send him off with love and kisses and then you just hope for the best. I mean... You can't force this situation. He's just not available. It's not, he's right. not available because he feels like he's empty, like he's just an outline sort of with, he's pale, all his organs and everything are pale, like he's not really all there. He, it's just simply he hasn't found himself for whatever reasons. And did he have trouble growing up in his family? I mean, did, did this issue start back there? What happened? Do you know? Um, it's not really his family. I mean, he's been through some pretty traumatic experiences. Like he had a, a best friend when he was younger that got um, was was shot and murdered as part of a gang initiation. Oh, uh-huh. um, like he was not involved in the gang; he just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah, um, right, right. And Brad was supposed to be with him that night, so I think he's guilt. He holds yep. himself, yeah, responsible. Yeah. You know. If okay, he had so been- this this explains it because I keep feeling there's stuff back in time there. So he must have been pretty young when this happened, right? He was about, yeah, 16. Yeah, I was not, getting 17. I mean, not very young, but. I was getting 17, 16. Well, that's young, especially for a guy, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And so he's got to find his way. He's got these issues at a young age then. He was introduced to a bloody murder, and uh, he should have been with him, but he probably would have been killed too, you know. I mean, we don't know right. the reasons why these things happen, and he hasn't found out the reasons yet or that satisfy him. So he needs to go off on a trek. You know, a lot of people do this. They need to go off. And they wander until they find themselves. They just do it. They may wander in different ways, but you don't want him to have to wander into his 40s or 60s or wander all his life. He's got to do it now. So, all right. Well, we're running out of time here because we're on the radio, but um, let me see what I can do here. I'm just looking to see what I can do to help the situation, if there's anything we can do. Well, what I want to do is I want to send out Good energy, a good mojo energy for both of you and for everybody out there. Hey, all you radio listeners, archived and for real or in whatever. Um, This is for any situation at hand to work out for the very best. This is for you, Elena and Brad, for this to work out for the very best and that you have the strength and the courage and the empathy and the understanding to allow this other person to do what they have to do to live their life. We all need that. Probably with somebody, at least somebody. Okay, so here comes the energy. Woo, bam, woo, bam, woo, bam, bam, mojo. Woo, 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 woo. Okay, I spent a little extra time giving him strength and courage because he needs that. He just feels so pale and empty in there. He's got to find Brad. He's got to find the spout where all the water comes up, you know, Um Got to get this water turned back on, the l- water of life within him. I'm just turning something there to bring it up. All right, darling, I'm wishing you both the best. Thank you. In all ways, okay? Glad you got through today. All right. Bye, darling. Well, that was interesting. Fortunately, I love my work. And I find you all very interesting. <laughs> I love to get in as, and, and see your stories and help where I can. And we all have a story like Paul... Harvey, wasn't it said? Everybody has a story. Let's do this. It's almost break time. Let's just go for it now. When we come back, I'll take more of your calls and see what we can do. Venus Andrecht with the Dear Venus Show.
Attention business owners and entrepreneurs. Are you looking for help with your online marketing? Or do you need a beautifully designed custom website that you can edit yourself at an affordable price? Contact Heather at StudioThirdEye.com. She will make it happen for you online. From website design, branding, social media, to getting found on the internet, you can reach Heather at StudioThirdEye.com. Heather's professional and fair and has many happy clients from small and mid-sized businesses. Find her at StudioThirdEye.com. That's Studio. T-H-I-R-D-E-Y-E dot com. Or you can email intuitiveinternet at gmail dot com and tell her what you need to accomplish. Heather will make it easy for you. Hi, I'm Venus's daughter, Summer McStravick. And as they say, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. That's why I think you might enjoy my podcast, Flow Dreaming. It airs live on Tuesday, right before Venus's show. Or you can find it on iTunes or at my website, flowdreaming.com. I work with energy and I look in people's lives just like Venus, except I call what I do Flow Dreaming. And I teach other people to manifest and create in their lives using this flow energy too. So I hope you'll check out my podcast, Flow Dreaming, on iTunes. CTR or at flowdreaming.com. Venus thinks the world needs cheering up. Let me tell you, her blog certainly does that. Every week, it's a true story about her life and the people in it. Here are a few comments. Oh, thank you. I am laughing so hard. Every Wednesday, it's great to start my day like this. And love, love, love to read your blogs. You always make my day. I have emailed your blogs on to many people this year. And your blogs are profound, prophetic, and wise. They make me laugh and cry and everything in between. And, okay, Venus, I almost spewed coffee out of my nose reading this one. Too funny. By the way, her family subscribes to her blog for their own protection. You can subscribe, too. Just look for the orange-colored feed at the top of the blog. You can find the latest and often harrowing adventures in Venus's life at godisalwayshappy.com forward slash blog. That's godisalwayshappy.com forward slash blog. You're listening to Dear Venus with your host, Venus Andrecht. Welcome back. Hey, this Saturday, February 9th, 2013, Summer and I are doing the love teleclass, so if you're not signed up and you want to be, please do so. Go to flowdreaming.com and look for our class, February 9th, 2013, ah, to bring the love into your life that you want to bring. I'm working on all the wishes right now uh, to help bring the person for you that's right for you. I look into you and and uh, make a wish that I think it makes sense. I mean, I see pictures and hear things, that kind of thing. Summer does her flow dreaming. I do a mojo. We just get all amped up. Boy, we get the energy coming. We bring all the love in. So I hope to see you there. All right, one more thing, and we'll get back to the calls here. There's another winner. Every Tuesday on the show, I choose another winner for a free 10-minute phone reading with me. Last week, um, the name I called Allie Ramirez, well, she heard her name. She got a reading. What's so funny is she was on hold on the studio line the whole time, never got to her. But right at the end when I called the, the winner's name, there she was. <laughs> it was a double-double. She obviously really needed a reading, so that was fun. So how do you get a reading? How do you win? Well, you got to be on my most current mailing list. There's two mailing lists, an old one and a new one. I'm trying to get rid of the old one, but so many of the people on the old one haven't come to the new one, and so I hate to disband it. If you're on the new one, you know because you've clicked on the blue headphones on my homepage on my website, godisalwayshappy.com. If you haven't done that, click on them. You'll be in the current mailing list. You'll always get a free, or all, all, also get a free MP3 mojo. No matter what happens, everything is always okay with music and my voice, and you can play it over and over and over, and there's lots of mojos on my website. Um uh, 
they're about all different things for a nominal price. But anyway, so I go into the current mailing list, close my eyes, and, and whirl the thing around on my computer and come up with a name. And today, it's Cordelia Giles. Cordelia Giles, G-I-L-E-S. Cordelia, this is valid through February 11, 2013. After that, null and void. So you need to get um, to me. You can reach me through my website or email venus at venusandrecht.com. I think that's it. And now we're going to go back. And I'm going to leave my body behind to take my mind somewhere. Let's go with Debbie in Costa Mesa. Debbie, Debbie. Hello. I hear you have a little weird story about how you got on air. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to get on the air, so I guess it was meant to be. <laughs> well, yeah, because I was talking to Barb at the break, and she said the funniest thing just happened, because she answers all the, the phone calls and lines everybody up. And you said, well, I just called to listen to the show. Can I listen to the show from here? <laughs> and she said, no, you have to ask a question. And you went, oh, so I figured, I said, leave her on because it probably means she should be here. So what's your question? <laughs> well, I was, I was, I guess, asking about my love life, if there's anybody coming in major, you know. I've been alone for quite a while. Well, tell us your story. How old are you? What do you do? Um, well, I'm I'm a, a server in a restaurant. I'm uh-huh. mid-50s. And mid what? Mid what? Mid, mid-50s. 50s. Okay, I lost that. Okay. Huh? Yes, and, I um, just... I, I saw my ex about 11 days ago. I was with him for 20 years. Husband or just boyfriend? No, just boyfriend, but it was it's a long story. After a few years we were together, uh, he actually married his other friend, and he admitted to me 11 days ago it was for dollars and cents. So, Wait know. a second. Wait a minute. I lost something here. You were with him for 20 years, and you split up, and then he got married? No, we, no, no. <laughs> We did not split up. We did for about a month, but we still, I kept on seeing him. Wait a second. I yeah. can get this straight. It's so not, oh. while you guys were seeing each other for 20 years, he married somebody else? Correct. And he, he, when did he tell you this? Well, I found out through a friend of his. This was many years ago. Many, many years ago. We're, we're, you, we broke up like in 1997. We haven't seen each other in quite a while. I know, but I think it's just a fascinating story. You're with a man, 20 years, he gets married while you're together and doesn't bother to tell you. No, he was going to hide it from me, yeah. So for money, he married her? Did uh, he have kids or anything? Uh, he had two children from a previous marriage. Okay, is he, is, really he still married to that, is he still married to that woman that he married while he was with you? Yes, yes. Which well, is, by golly. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's interesting. <laughs> I need to write a book. <laughs> yeah. So you saw him 11 days ago, and how, how'd it go? Do you need to have me look at anything? Well, I, I told him, I said, you know, I we it was very good healing because I, I told him, I said, you know, you you gave her everything, um, your name, uh, your, your money, you know, you taught her how to invest, and you've left me with nothing. And I had yeah. given him my money to help him when he needed help years ago. And Oh, I, and he just he just paid it forward, eh? <laughs> yes, much. And he just didn't understand why I left him. I said, well, you cheated on me. And it wasn't, oh with, it was with others. You know, I just, I, I finally just, I, I laughed, you know, so. Well, he sounds, he sounds like his mind doesn't work like most people's. No, no. But anyway, so neither here nor there. I don't know whether he'll help me or not financially. I do need, you know, some financial help and I'm not going to hold my breath on that. I'm okay. actually, now I'm just calling to see if there's anybody healthy coming in <laughs> who's wow. single. Yes, and who's sensible? Yes, intelligent. Who will treat you well? Who doesn't do things like that's one heck of a story, you know? Oh, you ain't heard nothing, honey. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I've heard a lot, but let me look at you, Debbie. What color is your hair? Blonde. I want to know that guy's first name. What did you call him besides? Uh, Frank. Frank. Okay, just Frank. All right. Thought maybe you had a more descriptive. Well, adjective. I used to call him Ollie as a nickname, but. That's just, well, I was, I was just teasing you, pulling your leg there. Never oh, mind. Oh, well. Okay. I always, yeah, whatchamacallit. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Let me get myself together here because um, I'm just sort of fascinated by this Frank, by how he thinks he could get away with that. I obviously did and how he did. I mean, I'm just amazed by it. I'm amazed by people. I'm hmm. still amazed by people. All right, Debbie, let me get into you. Okay, Debbie, Debbie, Debbie. 
Debbie, 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 who's a server at a restaurant, and you're blonde, and you're mid-50s. Okay, Debbie, Debbie, Debbie. Well, I feel like you're a really nice person. Uh, you have a nice smile, a nice way about you, very pleasant to be with. Um, it feels like you like people and that people like you. So far, does this sound like you? Would you say no? It's all good, right? No, no. Actually, it's good. Yes. <laughs> we'll go okay. with that. <laughs> okay. Okay. And let me see. I'm just going to be you. I'm walking around doing your job with you. Uh, and, you know, there's a little bit of a chip on your chest. By that, they mean, when I say they, the beings, they're saying that you're a little bit weary, leery. Well, weary, too, I suppose. A little bit leery now. And this thing, they show me something you're wearing on your chest. It's like a, a brooch or a little pin. And you may have something there anyway. But what they're saying about this is it's a detector. It's a, it's a bull detector. You know, it's like you filter stuff now that men say to you, people say to you, and you always think, oh, yeah, sure, or you filter it through that. Does this make any sense to you? Uh, yes, I do actually wear one of those EMF pendants in, in my bra. It's a circular disc, but ah, that might be it. That's probably what I'm seeing, but it also is serving this other function, too, yes. that um, it's like, you're not going to let anything, and this thing may be pulling apart in that, let anything or anybody get to you that's going to cause you trouble, because apparently there's a lot of guys out there who would cause you trouble. Well, it's like you yeah. have to sift, you have to sift through a lot of the stuff. You, you just, I see you winding your way through it, sidestepping it, you know, and you're just very cautious now and careful. And so that's good. And what you need to do is I, I wrote that book called Certain Men. You know, how to unlove them and need them and replace them with a good guy. You just need to ask a lot of questions. We all do whenever you meet somebody. And then ask them the same questions a week or two later, see if you get the same answers. You need to go through all that. And I feel like you're at that point where you go eeny, meeny, miny, mo, no, 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 no. And so, okay, part of this, this is excellent what you're doing, but part of what it's doing is there's a lot of guys that know this at a different level. They see it and they feel it. And so they won't fool with you. So sometimes it may seem to you that your life is kind of barren of men, you know, but that's because you've got a good filter going. What's the point of having a lot of guys coming after you if they're creeps? Yes. It just, it just causes suffering. I was thinking the other day, the way you know if you're in love with a, with a real good love is you're not in suffering. You're not involved in suffering. It was something like that. That's how I judge it. You know, real love, you know, you're not suffering. Maybe occasionally, but you're not suffering all the time. Okay, so we're looking at Debbie to see beyond what's happening right now. I feel there's a man for you. I feel there's a very nice man. Uh, he matches you in his, his niceness. Um, he looks like he's kind of middle-aged to me, maybe a tiny bit over that. You may know him now or, or soon. Um I don't know why, but I saw him coming in wearing a coat and a muffler and not in Costa Mesa. He may come from a colder climate, or it may be on a cold evening. I don't know. Just keep it in mind. He might ha- be a little bit bald on top, um, and you might he might come in to where you work, and there's something. He reminds me of somebody on that chessboard, uh, not chessboard, that game, Money. What's the name of that thing where you put, put all those pieces? Monopoly. Monopoly. He's like that. So you could meet him through um, something social like that, or he might even have some money. So in other words, yes, things are getting better. Oh, good. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And so just keep being your own lovely self and just know that somebody really nice is coming in and just play with people and have a good time and laugh and, you know, brush the old flies off your plate if they land, you know, the wrong kind of fellows and just go about your business and be happy. And I just got to look at Frank really fast. Frank, Frank, he just interests me. Frank, 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 how did you think you could do this and get away with it? Oh, he just thinks he can do things like that and get away with it. He thinks of Frank. Frank is very into Frank. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't think about him anymore. He can take care of himself. He's very Frank involved. Debbie, thank you for your call, darling. Well, thank you for taking my call. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. <laughs> Big hug to you, you kook. (laughs) I love you. (laughs) Love you. Bye. Bye. Let's try and fit somebody else in. Kate, Boston. Hello, Kate, Kate. What are you up to, girl? Hi. 
So I, um, I'll make it quick because I know the show is almost, almost over. Um, I've yeah. been with someone for two years, and it's kind of a non-traditional relationship. Um, but we've been, you know, he's been saying that he wants to show more commitment to me. But then in actuality, it doesn't happen. So I was just wondering if you might be able to put some thoughts in his head, you know, ways to show more concrete commitment. Okay, how is it non-traditional? Okay. How is it a non-traditional relationship? Um... Hmm. It's difficult to explain. Maybe on there. I mean, it sort of is a traditional relationship. Um, it, you mean you it, just it, don't want to tell us on the air? Maybe. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's um, it's you know, it's, I guess I would say it's a traditional relationship. Um, no, you wouldn't. Now, Kate, <laughs> nobody knows who you are. Is this non-traditional <laughs> se- sexually? You mean? No, no. I mean, it's it's just more like he he wants to, like he says he wants to be owned by me, and so like I would make decisions in the relationship. Like I would be the more dominant one, and he'd be so a so dominant. Not so much sex. Yeah, but, but not the, not so much sexually. Just like in terms of. But he wants you to he wants you to tell him what to do and whip him around, right? Yeah, yeah. And he says he wants to be owned and stuff. But then I think he, you know. So, you know, he says he wants to get married. He doesn't really believe in marriage, but he says he wants to marry me because I want Well, listen, if he that. wants to be owned, listen, and if he wants you to tell him what to do, he'll do anything you say. Do you want to own a man? Um, somewhat, but I think he still wants that control. You know what I mean? I think he he says he wants to be owned, but I think that then he has... He <laughs> I wish we had more time here. This sounds fascinating. What's his first name and how old is he? What does he do? David, he's 48, um, and he does credit repair. And how old are you, Kate, and what do you do? I'm 37, almost 38, and I um, am, do short-term rentals. Okay, let me go into you really fast, and then into David, 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 Kate, 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 and David, David. I hear, I'm a friend, don't don't worry who I am, we haven't got much time here. I'm a friend of Kate's. Um, she says you want to be owned you want her to own you. Is this true? He goes, hee, 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 hee. <laughs> He's laughing like, hee, 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 hee. <laughs> like, you know, he just likes the idea. Isn't that cool? He says, Ooh. I said, well, it's not very, I say, it's not very manly. And he says, so what? You know, <laughs> okay, so uh, do you really want to marry her? It's like I see a picture. He wants you to take like a sledgehammer and beat him over the head with, drag him off and marry him. He would love that. He, 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 he. So, okay, you can have a non-traditional marriage or relationship. I don't care, Kate. Gosh. Gosh knows. I hear it all. So, I don't care. So you can I, I, put positive thoughts of commitment? Like what? Like, like what? Like what? I mean, just like I think he he has like negative thoughts in terms of like my work and things like that. Like he just thinks pessimistically and negatively. So I was just wondering if you can put more positive thoughts that like the work that I do is good and you know he can be more positive about that. And, and okay, well I don't see that. I mean I I haven't looked there. I think this is a bigger issue. Uh, my question to you is: Do you want to marry this man? Yes. Then you're going to. I don't know that I would hit him with that. <laughs> I can't remember no, him to do it. Well, though. metaphorically speaking, you would just say, "We're getting married. We're getting married now. I've set the date. Get your tux or whatever, and we're going to do it." And if I hear one more word about my work and you're not liking it or thinking it's not good enough, then you're out. We're not getting <laughs> married. I'm going to take a rope and whip you with it. <laughs> well, you're okay. laughing, but not not too convincingly. Um, okay, let me go back to David. All right, I'll put in what you want. David, although I don't think that's a problem here. Uh, David, oh, she can work at whatever she wants to. It's fine with me. I'll do whatever she says. I'll go along with whatever she wants. I want her to own me. I'll put up with anything. Oh, I just want to marry her, marry her right now. Have her ask me. Have her drag me off. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Okay. That's really what he thinks. It's funny. I was well, that's what I, put, that's what I put in there, and it's, Kind of oh, okay. close to what, it's kind of <laughs> close perfect. to what he thinks and how he thinks. Oh, bye, golly, we have to go. And I sure wish I had more time because I'd like to go a lot deeper in <laughs> this one, Kate. You so much. You're a good one. Woo hoo! Thanks. thanks for the call. <laughs> all bye. right, darling. Let us know what happens. Okay. All, all right. All right, all right everybody. Uh, wow. We'll come back next week. Who knows what might happen? Venus Andrecht with the Dear Venus Show. <laughs> 